Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Dad Podcast, hosted by myself, Sean Stafford. We have producer Ollie in the house. Say hi, Ollie. Hi, Ollie. Dad bod bants. <laughs> and today we are joined by the sniggering Chloe Maidley. Oh, no. Haskell. Chloe Haskell. I know. She's had a bit of a traumatic start to the day. Um, <laughs> You've been you've just been thrown up on. Yes, I have. Am I am I looking at a camera or am I just no, you can, well, with the mic? Well, so for any of you guys that are listening to this on iTunes, we actually film it for YouTube as well. Um, so there are three cameras pointed at us. Feel free to look into them. I'm guessing this is my boo here. That's your boo. So okay. that one that one there is straight for you. The one in the middle gets us both Fine. and then the the one with the red light on it is just for me. But okay. well, you can look where you want, but as long as you keep talking into the mic, then everyone, we're all good. Fine. Everyone will be happy. Um, I yeah, I, I got to go for lunch with my nephew because I, I live in Northamptonshire with James. My husband plays for uh, the Saints. No one cares about him. I know. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when people say that to me, even though it's completely fake. I'm like, okay, fine. Um, and I came to London and thought I would kind of kill as many birds with one stick yeah. as I could. So the first one was my nephew who uh, has just started eating real food and has a cough. So I gave him his food and then he just coughed it all over me, threw up everywhere. And now here I am. But the good news is when you walked into the podcast studio, we've had boys in all afternoon <laughs> and you dr- you wafted in and it smelled amazing. Oh my God, I so love thank that. So thank you for bringing the clean lady smell I into- I drowned myself in perfume did you? after. We appreciate you making the effort to not come in smelling of puke You're so welcome. and to come in smelling of flowers. And just to pre- James, if you are listening, which I hope you are, we love you. <laughs> no, but it's not all about you all the time, babe, okay? <laughs> That's what I was getting at. So, so Chloe, is it Chloe Haskell Maidley or Maidley Haskell or no, is it just? Just Chloe Haskell. Cool. I've got brothers to carry on the Maidley name, so yeah. I don't feel too guilty. Which I think is part of, one of the reasons I thought about keeping my name was partly because I feel really bad on my dad, who I'm yeah. super close to, and is the man in my life, always has been, Yeah. to then just kind of, I don't know, kick them when they're down and take your husband's name. I just yeah. feel like, I felt bad about it. And then and then I spoke to him and he was like, Chloe, we've got we've got boys in the family. We've yeah. got male grandchildren, you're fine. Yeah. Um, and I and James really, really wanted me to take on his name and He's and he's quite traditional, right? He's super traditional. Yeah. And I and you know I I do consider myself as as a feminist, you know, and I and I I, I definitely understand why none of my friends took their partner's last name. Really? Um. Yeah, and that makes total sense to me. But I kind of wanted to. I'm quite traditional too. I yeah. think he's he's kind of brought that out in me. Although I think it has always been there. Um. And I like that I'm Chloe Haskell. It's it's nice. It's cute. It yeah. is cute. It feels it's such a horrible word, but it feels quite like cute. Like ah. Oh. <laughs> the thing is, you guys are quite cute together. I know that, so to put a, put a bit of perspective on it, so I've been married for just under 10 years. And when I got married, Sophie took my name. So it was Sophie Stafford. Yeah. Because we're lazy and I don't think we've actually done the paperwork and because both of our passports hadn't didn't need changing, Renewed, yeah. um, she is still officially Sophie Porter. So she's officially got her old name. And then since over the last 10 years, She's actually hyphenated her name, so she's now Sophie Porter Stafford, and I it's because like because she, um, I think not not necessarily felt guilty, but she kind of wanted to keep her, her family identity. heritage and her family yeah. identity as well as mine. Yeah, and I love that. I do love that. But there's just something about like Chloe Madeley Haskell. I feel like people hate me, and I'm <laughs> let's not annoy them <laughs> even more. <laughs> I'll just go down the Chloe Haskell route and shut up. <laughs> hey, do you know what? Um, I think it works. Yeah, I think I, do I think Chloe Haskell works. It's, I think Madeley Haskell would have been a bit of a mouthful. Yeah, I know, and it just it just looks like I'm being I don't know I, grabby in a way. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I just I need to just pick one and go with it. Yeah, and I think I think it's a it's a strong one. And to be honest, you know, James Haskell, international rugby player, <laughs> yeah. international superstar. I'm just waiting for people to start calling me Hask, and I'm oh, like, that, is that is that why you on. did it? Yeah, and one girl did on Instagram the other what, day. Just called you Hask. Called me Hask, and it was like the the highlight of my life. And I was like, I am taking over your life, James. And he was like, No. Would you want to be called Hask? Yeah, I think it's hilarious. Or would you want to be called the Hask? No, no, no. Not the Hask. That's a bit too masculine, I feel. Okay. Yeah, I'll just, he can be the Hask and I'll be Hask. I like it. (laughs) Um, So talk to me a little bit about uh, the last few years, qualified PT and nutrition, fitness model, 
best-selling author. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, isn't it? I, so I, I, I guess everybody you know, always wants to know how I kind of came to this um, because I think I started out working in TV, both right. behind the scenes and in front of the camera. Because quite honestly... I did not know this. Yeah. I felt like I should because of my mum and dad. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that's what I should do. And I was just really unhappy and hated my life and would just go out four or five nights a week here in Soho which is where we're recording um and just yeah like drink way too much be out partying all night and then just rock up and in the world of tv that's really really normal Um, yeah but I I, am somebody who suffers from anxiety and has quite like a well did have a very low self-esteem so for me it just kind of fed this fire the like this fuel of like negativity like and a like a little cycle of just yeah, yeah it didn't work for me and i'm not i'm not saying i don't like it when people kind of poo poo quote unquote party animals because for some people they're just enjoying their life and they are fine yeah. but then there are people like me who actually it was really bad for um and i just couldn't quite deal with it um so i wasn't very happy and then i met my now ex-boyfriend who is a personal trainer and a bodybuilder and the cool. son of a bodybuilder and he took me into the gym and he put an Olympic bar on my back and he taught me how to uh, do some of the big compound lifts like the squats and the deadlifts and and um, kind of the, the clean and snatches. And, and I just fell in love with it, which was bizarre because I yeah. hated exercise, but I n- it's because I'd never done weightlifting before. Yeah. Um, fell in love with it, carried on training, um, started watching him PT, got really jealous that I wasn't doing it, left TV, moved home, started all my qualification courses fast tracked everything within a year i was fully qualified wow. started which a blog. which which course did you do so well obviously all of them are active iq yeah, right? yeah. is that I, so at least is i that think they are are they all active iq qualifications i don't know um i know that there are different like examination boards and courses yeah. and all that sort of stuff so i did well mine was with a company called evolve leisure in essex cool because i actually was like I was splitting my time between home and him at the time while I was getting qualified. Um, They've shut down now, but the active IQ qualification, I'm pretty sure is the qualification you need to get. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's a really good company called The Training Room. Yeah, yeah, I know it. Yeah, and they they always say to me, like, if anybody asks you, would you mind saying, you know, to look at our website? So I obviously then looked at their website and they're really good because they can do it at, they can do at home courses, online courses, and then... Yeah, so did that. And did, did you enjoy the actual? Did you enjoy the actual process of, like the course? Yeah, yeah, it was really. Again, I wasn't somebody who enjoyed exercise, and all of a sudden, I was in the gym every day. Yeah, and I wasn't an academic ever. I mean, I got myself to uni, but I dropped out after a year because right. um, I re- I realized I was just pushing this, you know, academic th- kind of thing that you're meant to do. Yeah, but sometimes it wasn't sometimes for me. like it's you think you need or you think people think you should do this therefore you should do this yeah and I think being my parents daughter it was like I just really felt like I even though I think I knew I wouldn't really last at uni I kind of got myself there went realized within a year that it wasn't for me and I wanted to work dropped out um and always considered myself like not an academic yeah absolutely loved the course Cool. Loved it. Like, just wanted, just loved like learning about the body and learning about nutrition. Although I will say, obviously, a lot of it is very <laughs> ill-informed. Ironically, yeah. and I look at it now and I'm like, wow, if we really stuck to the food pyramid, we'd look like the food pyramid. <laughs> but, but it was still really great. Um, and it was just the start of of of, of my my passion. So yeah, I loved it. And I think that's. I think you hit the nail on the head. Like, you may not have been into exercise, but you found something within exercise and within fitness mm-hmm. that you loved. And you may not have been a bookworm at school or at uni, but then you find something that flicks your switch, and yeah. all of a sudden. You pick up books for fun. Yeah, um, exactly. And it's you know, and since then you've obviously taken this on and you've developed a great business and yeah. a great profile within the fitness sector. As in, um, I told my neighbour that I was going to do a podcast with you. She said, "Oh, what are you up to?" I said, "Oh, I'm doing a podcast." Um, she goes, "Oh, who have you got in?" I said, "You know, Chloe, Chloe Maidley." And she goes, "Oh, I love her. I love oh, the stuff she puts out there. I love that." And she's a 55-year-old lady who has a you know tough job and works really hard but loves the content that you're putting out. Well, no, I, I love that and it means a lot to me. And I think I worked 
really hard, not on a recognition level, but personally, like very much internally, to get better and better at my job as the years passed. And I, I look back now at some of the advice I used to give, yeah. even as fr- recently as last year, and I'm like, right. no, absolutely no. And I just, I think I, I work really hard to kind of keep getting better and to keep getting qualifications under my belt, to keep yeah. learning and improving as I go. And, and now I feel like I'm at a point where I do have quite a lot of self worth in my job um and i worked really hard to get here and so hearing that makes me feel i don't know it just makes it feel like it's all worth it it's just brilliant i know i know i don't want to blow smoke up your ass but um i know a lot of people that love the content you put out Uh and it's um and and it's it's cool because and i love the content you put out it's almost like there's an element about what you put out which is giving zero (laughs) cares yeah (laughs) Yeah. you know here we are i've got i've got an explicit sign next to the podcast name because but you're just such a gentleman um, i love it yeah i try not to swear in front until too too much um (laughs) but it's one of those things where you know you'll post funny memes and at the same time you'll post client transformations and at the same time you'll post a photo of you looking great in a photo shoot and it's that real mix of genuine content and you post a lot don't you how often do you post a day at the moment, it totally depends. If, right. So if I've got something out, like at the moment, I've got uh, my books out and my well, my second book just dropped. Um, and I've got... Just dropped. Oh, just dropped. And I've got marketing talk for you there. And I've got um, my podcast, which just came out. So at the moment, I would we are say... Gonna, we are going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, so. fine. Oh, well, quite similar names. Um, they are, yeah. Yeah. I think I, at the moment, I'm probably posting at least five times a day. Wow. Which is so intense and even I get sick of myself but I'm like you know what I've got a job to do suck it up and then tomorrow James and I actually go on holiday you can bet your butt you'll be lucky if you get one post a day out of me (laughs) and is this because you're going on holiday to switch off or is it where are you going on holiday without well Dubai oh it's okay so it's going to be in the sun yeah it's going to be like bikinis and I just need I think so he it's rugby so what happens is a week before they get a holiday that their um, head coach will say oh by the way you're getting holiday next week which is super fun financially (laughs) (laughs) yay Um, so we get a holiday and then we come back and he's fully fit now so he will be fully finally back in the swing of the season after being injured for like nearly a year that's not good is it no it's not fun it's not fun for him and it's not fun for me to be around (laughs) (laughs) well I know that from a personal experience that being injured I know that people around me uh, the people around you suffer almost as much as you do when you're injured just because you know if you're an athlete and you're an athlete of his caliber or even of your your caliber being injured is it takes away a huge part of what you love yeah and so you're just fucking grumpy and your identity yeah feeling of like self-worth and or i mean i think with james it's really interesting i think it comes from feeling like he's very in charge and in control and like um like a dominating person when he's at at work aka training playing on the field and when you take that away from him it it just manifests itself in his personal life and he just becomes very kind of temperamental and you really have to kind of take a deep breath and be like you know what he's going through a really hard time and i need to just let it pass um but it's interesting yeah and i can see as he's getting fitter and he's training again and you know he's talking about playing again it all subsides so it's very interesting that is super interesting it's a little insight into psychology and (laughs) the psychology of of a top athlete um so you just mentioned your book it's just dropped your second book has just dropped talk to me about that what's that about so the first book it was very much a kind of one size fits all plan it was here's your meal plan because i did really weigh up in my head do i do calories and macros and give everybody like equations and um or do i give everybody a meal plan and i spoke to all my online clients and my face-to-face clients and they were all none of them tracked and none of them wanted to check nobody wanted to weigh out food nobody cared so i thought right if i want this book to sell i have to do a meal plan which as you know for the gen pop is a really hard thing to pull together (laughs) borderline (laughs) impossible yeah yeah it was really difficult so i basically just did a load of averages took a load of numbers figured it out wrote the food bible wrote the recipes guide so everything hit kind of the well everything hit the right amount of calories and the right macro methods high protein yeah yeah carb cycling all that um and then it was an at-home training plan and it it's called the four-week body blitz it's really intense as the name would suggest um and it got everybody amazing results however 
The thing that I didn't do, which I should have done in hindsight, is cater to the complete beginners who couldn't just jump into doing hit circuits because yeah. they'd never trained before um, or jump into a really restrictive diet like that because you know it, most people will throw in the towel if they're yes. brand new to it. And I also didn't cater to people like me who are in the gym lifting weights six days a week and n- already know a bit about nutrition and do actually track. And I just kind of catered to that middle active audience. And That's I thing you can't, you can't without getting super complicated in what you're trying to deliver, you can't please everybody and you can't yeah. write something specific to everybody because everyone's so different. So you just took a middle ground approach. Oh yeah, and that's exactly what I did and, and, and it worked. It, so it was the second best selling health and fitness book after The Body Coach last year. Wow. Which is huge, thank you. Yeah, it's it massive. was Yeah, it was massive. But I was disappointed, not in the sales, obviously, but I was disappointed professionally in myself that I I felt like I could have done it better and I should have done it better. So I wrote a second book, which is now out, which basically is three separate plans. One for complete beginners. It's its own training plan and diet plan. It's a lot gentler and you ease in. One very much like the first book, training and diet plan to get you results and one for people like me who know a bit more about nutrition who are in the gym lifting weights um and they're all together and if you want you can progress throughout them and if you don't want to you can stay in your lane and then i talk a lot about how to come out of a fat loss phase because i think something nobody ever talks about reverse dieting right Yeah, yeah and nobody ever talks about the fact that you should not always be on a diet. You should not <laughs> yeah. always be gunning to lose body fat because ultimately, even if you are, you're going to plateau. Your body's going to hit a wall. You're not going to get anywhere, so your efforts are all wasted. Also, like, it's not good for you. What, to psychologically or physically or both. both? Well, for me, I know from yeah. my experience, it's not good for me either either side of the spectrum. So I talk about how to kind of reverse out of it and try to hover around your results. Obviously, you're going to gain a bit of weight. Obviously, yeah. you're going to gain a bit of body fat when you come out of a fat loss phase. But hover around there without going back to your Wait, start point. Yeah. yeah. And then when to come back to it, which, to be honest, is the chapter of the book that I'm most proud of because I think people need to talk about it more. The mainstream media hate facts, as I'm <laughs> sure you know. I'm it, trying to... Do you know what? It sounds like you've just done your due diligence and you've kind of... You've obviously going through the process of writing a book and seeing it land with people mm-hmm. and then you know being honest with yourself about where you think you could improve it and then yeah. you, you know you've had the balls to go out there and have another crack at it and do it again yeah despite it being a freaking bestseller yeah you thought you know what well, i can improve on this and i can make this better and i can do better so therefore i will yeah which i think is very admirable well, you. i think you can be pr- i think you'd be proud of that thank you because yeah. many people would just sit back on their laurels yeah i did a number one selling book i sold shit tons of copies i'm just gonna sit there and you know i have a formula that works let's just do it again no and you know what no that i think and you'll know this there's so many people out there just doing it all wrong and i don't mean i don't i'm not sitting on my high horse so i don't i don't think i'm holier than now but i'm i think if you're if you're unwilling to learn and get better then you should bow out after round one. Um, either improve or, or get get the hell out of here because we're all trying. I know you yeah. are. You know we're all trying to to get better and be responsible. Um, I think that's a re- you hit be responsible yeah. to you know to not necessarily as in to to put the well being of the people you're trying to talk to yeah first rather than any financial gain or any any other thing that comes with it right it's being responsible it. yeah no yeah. it's but it's totally it and i think i've actually had real sleepless nights where i've thought about the advice i've given somebody and realized that it was wrong and it's honestly not worth it it I, yeah. just do it properly and there are too many idiots out there doing it the wrong way to make a buck and it makes me very very angry and i don't want to be one of them yeah well good for you Cheers, Sean. Cheers. <laughs> so you also mentioned that you have a podcast with a very similar name to mine. Yours is called The Bodcast. Yes, yeah. It's a great, it's a great I tried name. to get you on it, but being a dad, I think it must be really hard. I think about how busy I am, and then I put a kid in the mix, and I'm like, I want to throw up. I was I like, that's too much. <laughs> Hey, I think it was one of those ones where we we tried to we tried to book in some time, but I think you were doing like a girl only day or something. Yeah, we tried to reschedule. You're right. And <laughs> uh, and. Although I said, look, I know I've, I've, I've got a size 40 chest. <laughs> I've got luscious blonde hair and a size 40 <laughs> chest. I think my voice might give it away that I I'm not a girl. I think if we like, had you from like the neck up with the right makeup artist, yeah. we could... We so- <laughs> Sophie is a makeup artist. She is. Oh my she God, is, I yeah. I love your wife. She she's is, one she's of those legit. really rare, very honest people. Yeah. Doesn't do small talk. Like calls it how she sees it. Yeah. Love that. And do you know what? The thing that really 
infuriates me is that she's actually legitimately quite funny. She's really like funny. yeah, she's like her she's comic dry. timing. And the thing is, she kind of <laughs> she kind of knows she's funny. And <laughs> the annoying thing from my point of view is, on social media, I seem to be the butt of the majority of her jokes. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Yeah, so it's just kind of like you just go, oh, change the record, you know, find a new victim. But I um, do seem to remember her bullying you and James bullying me, and me and you just standing there. This is when I first met Sean this, at a wedding. This is a wedding, and we were just kind of like, oh, oh just like, <laughs> we're surrounded by big personalities. <laughs> But no, that's good. So, yeah, having having a you know, talk to me about your podcast. Like, what's it about? What's you know, obviously the podcast is it to do with fitness? Yeah, yeah. So it's called the podcast. So when I first did release the first book, I said to my publishers, and I want to do a podcast as well alongside the book. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of an added thing for for my fans and whatever. Um, and they were like, no. Because I think that they didn't. Uh, No, no, we're already taking enough of a gamble on you. Like we are not giving you a podcast. Yeah, and this is this is how it's always been, and I guess how it is for everybody, and how it should be. You know, you really have to fight to get things um, done. So I was like, oh, okay, fine. So then the book did really well, and we had the meeting for the second book, and then I said, and I really think we should podcast. And they were like, okay. I was like, yes, I proved myself. So uh, they gave me this studio at Penguin. And um, I basically just kind of shuttle people in and out who I really look up to and I really respect in the health and fitness industry, hence why I wanted to get you on. Stop um, it. Oh, I did, really. Stop you it. Were, <laughs> I had a list of 10. And, and I, I was I was number 11. And they had a couple who, of dropouts. You were number four, I think. No. I and, Top you know, five. You know I'll take else, it. Who else couldn't come that I really wanted? Matt Lovell, but he was away. And I was gutted about that because he's a hero of mine. He's good. He's I like brilliant. Matt. Yeah, I just love him. Phil Lurney was on it. It. Big Phil. Yeah, and he he could come, so we got one. But yeah, it was a uh, so I kind of just shuttle the people in and out who I love, and I basically sit down with them for forty five minutes, and I ask them loads of questions about their own uh, personal uh, kind of habits in terms of nutrition and training. Yep. And then I ask them loads of questions about how they the advice that they give to different clients, um, and then I ask them loads of questions about. Um, kind of my audience and what I know they would want to hear and what they would advise to them and it's just been brilliant it's been so much fun and I've learned a lot and I think my followers have learned a lot and that was the goal yeah and how many episodes did you shoot 10 cool and that's yeah. series one that's wrapped series up one, yeah how many episodes are out uh so far five cool well, halfway and, through. and it's available on itunes yep spotify and apple and every it's out every friday we've got a new episode every friday and every friday i just bombard my social media with links yeah. so cool so if any of you guys aren't following chloe what the hell are you playing at <laughs> um give them your instagram handles just so they can they can write it down or make a note of it so that if they're not following you already at maidly chloe Strong. Yeah. Keeping it simple. You'll see lots of photos of me in my underwear and then... Do you know what? There aren't as many... As they used to be. As they used to be. I know. I think that's because as you're posting eight times a day, there's only so many undie shots you can stick up, right? when When I got into... I was in really good shape in December for both a few shoots that I had and my wedding. Um, And then obviously I'm slowly coming out of it now. Yeah. Um, so the, I, it's like cyclical. There are months of the year when it's just me naked everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, and if that doesn't get you some more followers from the Dad Podcast audience, I don't know what will. I know. Come on down. Um, come on down. <laughs> right. Out of out of interest. So I had a quick flick through your IG feed. I think maybe yesterday or the day before. What yeah. What do you think gets you the most engagement? Oh my god! Isn't it so depressing? We talked about this before. It, yeah. So it's really depressing. If I post the selfie, I'll get thousands of likes. Or if I post a photo of James and I, I get tens of. Thousands I saw that. Of That's likes. that was where I was coming at. Yeah, they like. It's, it's like your wedding photo, mm-hmm. or the, a couple of your wedding photos were like crazy and, engagement. And one of them I had eighty thousand likes on, but I had to remove it because no. it didn't. Yeah, because I hadn't tagged someone in it that I should have tagged, and it was oh really word. annoying. That sounds like I've sold my soul to the devil. It, it was just we got lent my. They lent me my dress, and they lent him his suit. So Why is that selling your soul to the devil? That's no, it just sounds bad that I had to remove a wedding photo because the company wasn't tagged. It's not as bad. But as you it re-put sounds. it up. Did you re-put it yeah, up? Yeah, I re-put it up yeah. as soon as like I could. I did. Um, but yeah, no. So that gets the most engagement. But I remember talking to you about it before. Like I'll spend an hour right yeah. doing doing my hell cardio, writing a post, and I'll put like pour my heart and soul and knowledge into it in terms of nutrition or training or whatever. And I'll literally get a few hundred likes. And I'm like, this is the shit you should be loving. Like, this is the stuff that's going to really help you. 
but then they see a photo of me and James kissing and it's like it just gets people but then I think it's really sweet I, I'm really complimented by yeah. it but it's it's interesting it's and I think this is one of the problems with a platform like uh, like Instagram mm. and why maybe something like a podcast is much more authentic because yeah. obviously when uh, when people log on to Instagram, they don't fuck, they don't read. Yeah. They don't read the they don't read the captions, or they just skim over, or they're flicking yeah. through. Or even worse, Instagram chooses not to show people it, what, know, what you're posting. The right? Algorithms, yeah. Yeah, with, with to do with algorithms and shadow bans and all this sort of stuff. For whatever reason it is, they decide to sh- not show the people that follow you yeah. the posts you make. Yeah. And so, as you said, like you could go and put in what you think is like pouring your heart out, giving some real value and advice to your followers, and yeah. being super authentic. Yeah. And then for something completely out of your control, mm. they shut it down. And then it's and then it makes you question because you think, oh, I post I posted this up and I got five six hundred likes and I really loved it. Yeah. Why does everyone else not love it too? Yeah. And it's a bit of a bash. It and I know is. you shouldn't let it affect you, but it does. No, it does. I, but I do think you come for. So when I first started to notice, and they did change the algorithms. Uh, I think in the autumn of 2018 and I know that they did because my media girl at my publishing house yeah. emailed me and said just so you know you might see your engagement shift and it did yeah. so luckily she'd given me kind of a heads up or I think I would have been like what the hell like, does everybody hate me yeah, now what happened yeah. what did I do that I don't realize that I did like did I break some cardinal rule I don't know like what yeah, was yeah. it so I knew and I watched it drop and she was completely bang on point and but it does have this weird and it shouldn't because it's completely ridiculous and it shows that we everybody's lost all perspective on real life but it does have this effect of like oh my god i've upset people i've annoyed people like what did i do and and you really have to check yourself and be like no 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 this is social media you know this is a visual uh, this is visual escapism yeah and if i don't look naked or in love <laughs> they don't give it. They don't give yeah, a shit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like so. So if it doesn't polarize, if it uh, we, we were exactly. talking, I was talking about this with some of my earlier guests, and it was it's, it, there seems to be a big trend, and it's kind of if you look at the people that are doing, you know, or growing quickly on fitness socials at the moment, yeah. it's people that uh, have either doing stuff that's stupid. Yeah. Like just 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 like stupid almost like videos. comedy comedy stupid videos which yeah. either they've seen someone else do and they put their own slant on it like how many times did you see someone fucking do a bird box yes. did, you, did you see the bird yes, box yes, thing yes. like people like put like blindfolding themselves and walking around a gym it's like mate it's ridiculous like, what, if I just, if someone did that in my even, gym I would knock them out <laughs> yeah it's just like it's not even funny <laughs> like no. you probably haven't even watched bird box <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah, exactly. it's just like or or they are calling people out or saying stuff that isn't necessarily intentionally controversial to try and spike engagement. I'm kind of like, yeah. The do you want to be part of that cycle? No. Yeah. The best health and fitness um, pros out there will definitely like you know say their piece and uh, and be authentic. But uh, what I've experienced is the most professional people we don't call each other out. Like and if we do, it's private. Um, and yeah. you know, and 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 anybody who's who's doing it a different way is going to have a rude awakening when they look back at something they said or did and realize actually the science doesn't back it up or the experience doesn't back it up and they were wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, or even I, as as you said earlier, like some advice that you would have given last year, you'd probably put a different slant on it oh God, this year. So it's it like yeah, changes, things things yeah. change. Your opinion change. You learn. You update. You it, grow. It's science. It should change. And yeah. if you, <laughs> Jesus, you know, if we if we all just kind of stay rooted in our in our kind of dogmatic health and fitness point of view oh my god the world would, would still be flat <laughs> yeah, right the world would still be flat right <laughs> Just, uh, yes exactly we, we, we wouldn't go to we wouldn't try and sell to america because yeah. we'd fall off the world and piano legs would still be considered you know erotica and be covered i mean this are is they, ridiculous are they, are they not <laughs> <laughs> they, t- they turn me on <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe just me <laughs> Um, so if we're looking at your, so uh, who was your best guest? So on your podcast, like who who did you like? Who did you have in the studio that you mm. maybe maybe it was a surprise? Maybe you didn't think they'd be as good as they were, but who did you kind of enjoy having in? Oh, so I think James was my most fun just to do it with somebody who. What? Ask? Yeah. Oh come I, on! It's just because I boring. Him. Give I us know another him, one. I love him, and it's like it's just fun working with someone who like he's like, he's like my mate. However, um, Emma Story Gordon. Oh yeah, ESG, ESG, Fitness, ESG yeah. she, shreds, mate. She came in, and I just, I, I think our brains are very compatible. Like I think we are both quite feisty. And I did you just become best friends? friends? Yeah, we became best <laughs> friends. It was super fun. Um, and then, and then I also had somebody else who's my least favorite. Are you gonna say it? No. No, I'm not okay. gonna say it because it's too controversial. Is it obvious? 
if they listen to your maybe the yeah. podcast. You know what? I'm just going to go with it and say yes. Okay, so <laughs> if you want to find out who <laughs> who Chloe thought was shit on, uh, <laughs> listen to the entire series, the entire first series of the podcast, and. Um, <laughs> And you'll find it out. It'll be bloody obvious. I think it's obvious. And I think everyone will probably feel the same as me. Although, maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe everyone will think it's me. I don't know. Maybe you're having a bad day. some people you just don't gel with. Yeah, it's true. And you, I, you have to work. It, it, when you're like doing, when you're the one asking the questions, you have yeah. to be so professional and like keep think? it tight, keep it tight. But it was like everything. I was like, it was a, it was, it was a struggle. Okay. Well, I might. <laughs> I, I'm gonna when we're off camera or when we're off air. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fast forward to that episode and dig it out and just listen, listen, get the popcorn out and just be like, yeah, nom, 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 nom. Look at you really working hard for the potty. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about fitness so what is what is fitness for you and what is your fitness message Mm. that might be a bit of a shit question might no it's not at all it's just it's so (laughs) multi-layered um it's i'm like an onion just peel me well it changes you know what it changes uh so i i would say when i started training it was very much that my enjoyment my physical and mental enjoyment of weightlifting specifically yeah. was um what kept me going and then very quickly almost immediately like within days i started to see it have a knock-on effect on my anxiety which i used to struggle with really badly okay and it started to make me feel mentally a lot more stable capable strong together so then it had like a huge effect on my mental state and then I wanted to see, you know, the result of the hard work I was putting in in the gym. So obviously I realized quite quickly that I had to change my diet. Yeah. And then, you know, and I make no apologies for this and I encourage other women not to because I think we're really up against it right now with people's annoying opinions. I started to see my body change and I loved it. Yeah. And it motivated me and fueled me to keep going and keep keep trying to hit PBs in the gym and trying to beat my best time on a hit sprint and 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 I and it really pushed me. And then it, this whole cycle just kind of bled into each other and round and around we go and I've never never stopped and I think there are a million and one different reasons to get into the gym. Whether it's you want to look better, you want to feel better, you are enjoying just the half hour therapy session that you're, you're yeah, having. Yeah. Um, so if, if one falls by the wayside, remember the other one. Um, and actually, you know what? More, much more recently, the most recent addition to these things that I love about fitness has been like longevity. I've started to listen to people like Rhonda Patrick right. um, and Sasha and Panda and uh, Dr. Dominic D'Angostino and all these amazing PhD scientists who are talking about uh, the effects of longevity in terms of um, epigenetics and cancer and dementia and all these things that completely correlate with training, fitness, muscle mass. Um, And so now, you know, if I don't want to go to the gym because I don't care if I have abs the next day, like for once, I just don't even care. I think, no, you know what? This is actually really good for my life and my, my physical well-being, and I go. So it's kind of packaging up that healthy living, that active lifestyle mm-hmm. for for the long term, not yeah. necessarily just for shreds before beds or <laughs> getting ready for Dubai next week. But it's yeah, it's oh, that uh, not ready for Dubai. <laughs> it's that kind of long term. You know, you want to be ma- you know fifty five, sixty, sixty five, seventy, and married and happy and healthy yeah, and moving and, and able to get to the loo on my own and able to live on my own for as long as I can. And I think there's a million and one reasons to do it, and you shouldn't apologize for any of them, however shallow or I don't know, long-winded they might be. Um, find whatever your reason is that day, because we all, you know, mentally, we're all over the place every day. So just, it, yeah. just get there. There are plenty of reasons, so just find the yeah, one that find, may, one. find yeah. the one that speaks the loudest to you that day. Exactly. That's really interesting. <laughs> so um, let's fast forward. So newly married. How long have you been married? Is it weeks, months? Yeah, hang on. Four, five, five and a half weeks. Wow. No, wait. Hang on. You should know your wedding day. Yeah, well, it's December 16th, so I'm trying to think. Four, five, six weeks. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's back end of last year. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you, you know, this might be a bit of a personal question, but do you want kids? Do you have much experience with kids? Is it something, this is obviously the dad podcast, so, yeah. you know, James, is this something that you... It's so funny you say this. James and I, literally before I walked in the door, were talking about this on the phone. Like, where are you? I, okay, we're both very lucky in that we're on the same page, and we... We know that now isn't the right time. Yeah. But we know that one day will be. I'm I said to him on the way here, 
that I am starting to become more and more open to the idea because of my nephew who puked on me. <laughs> yeah. If I can Lad. handle that. What's his, what's his name? We'll give him a shout out. Kit. Kit, you savage. Kit, you little shit. Yeah. <laughs> he vommed on me. Um, but I love him. He's the best kid ever. He like just laughed in my face straight after and yeah. just carried on munching. But he he's definitely made me more open to it. James, on the other hand, recently went to go see a friend of his who had a baby. Yeah. And they haven't really bonded. And you can tell the guy's kind of regretting it. How old is the baby? Like, like, like baby, baby. You know, it's like two and a half. Oh, right. Okay. So not a baby. A toddler. Yeah. Okay. Maybe a bit younger. Maybe like two. Anyway. So j- anyway, this, 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 he's one of those guys that probably shouldn't have had kids. Yeah. And you know, that happens sometimes. Happens so, a lot. Yeah. So he's kind of panicked. And now I'm becoming more open to it and he's kind of retreating. So we're basically saying, okay, look, we're not going to talk about this again yeah. until maybe next year. We're both very young still. Th- I'm 31 and he's 33. It's pretty young. Yeah, but you're 30... Plus. What are we saying? 25. <laughs> and you, how old? Is Lucas? Yeah. He's three and a half. So I had a... Or we had a kid. I think Sophie was 32. No, she was older. She was 30. Yeah, 32. That's she got. We got pregnant yeah. when she was 32. That's kind of a good age. It's a good age. It we is. we were ready, and to put it into perspective, like I would say that I am fully into dad life. Do you love it? It's the best thing in the world. Okay, so answer me this. Yeah. I know that you would throw yourself in front of a train for Lucas, Correct. and I know that you are you absolutely adore him. I would probably throw most Instagram. people in front of a train, train for Lucas. Lucas. Yeah, and that's how it should <laughs> be, right? But on a personal level, do, can you? Step back outside of your life and be objective and look at your life without him and with him. And can you legitimately say, my life is better now that I have a child? Oh, it's... The answer to that is a simple one million percent. Don't get... Right, so there's... So you need is to it, speak is it, to James. Is it better? <laughs> is it better? And this is going to sound crazy. And people... I had, a, I had a bit of a debate with a friend of mine who's got a dog. And I, I had a dog as well. <laughs> and he was saying... And he, and he doesn't want kids. And he was saying, you know, but, you know... It's kind of the same as just having a dog. And I was like, look, I had a dog. And yeah, when you have a dog and that's kind of your baby, you feel you do feel love towards a dog. And it is kind of at that point, at a, if you're ranking love out of 10, you go, yeah, I love my dog a 10 out of 10. <laughs> like, sorry, Maggie, if you're listening, <laughs> if you are. But you don't like, compare, Mags. <laughs> you know, as in, it is a bajillion times more. And there's just... It, and I'm not being corny or cheesy, but it is the single best thing in the literally in your life. You want yeah. to be better and spend time with them. And I think the more you invest, the more you get back. And I agree. this is why I asked how old your friend's baby was, because the first 18 months, yeah. Yeah, they don't really give that much back. But exactly. from 18 months onwards, damn it, I just want to hang out with him. I literally, my friends don't like me as much anymore <laughs> because... I, they just don't see me because I go for brunch with my son. I love. Do you know that. what I mean? And I quite happily like we like this is the first Christmas where he's actually got Christmas, and he was like, <gasps> "Daddy, can we watch a Christmas movie?" Yes. And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> You're like, "Oh my god, here we go! So, I get to relive it all over again." And so literally, and it's the best thing ever. And I wasn't paternal before I had a kid. I didn't like children really. No, I don't really like. like it. Other than my nieces and nephews, I don't care. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I like my nephew, but it would have been one of those things. Of, yeah, I can spend an hour with you, but then after that, like, pff, I'm done. You're like, done. I don't really know what to say. I don't know how to act. I don't know. You know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm an adult, and I hang out with adults. It's now I'm a parent, and I could hang out with kids all day. See, uh, really? Oh, see, that's interesting. So it's bled so out into children as a whole. As a whole, it's not just my boy. I like. You're all like kids. down with kids. I, I'm, I'm down with the kids. <laughs> for sure wow. but it's like one of the things and it does change in you and and you and I think most parents get this and most people that aren't parents don't get it yet you can't describe it as in you can say oh Everyone yeah it's love like you that, never yeah. know but it honestly is and until like you know I thought love the love I had for my dog was a 10 now I know that that's a 1 and yeah. the love that I have for my son and my wife is a 10 Aww. and it's going to sound really oh, cheesy no, but it's no, not it it's, it's true how, I think that's how well I don't want to be presumptuous and I don't blame anybody for not feeling like that but in, in my idealistic head that's how it should be yeah. and I and I, yeah I think you you need to speak to James because <laughs> I'm not in any rush <laughs> okay Hask we'll I catch up for panicking. a coffee the, the, gir- the girls yeah. can chat and look after the cubby and then uh, we can, you know, we can I can twist your arm into having a baby I anyway was, 
having making the baby is fun yeah right so <laughs> if not just start with that yeah oh did you not yeah yeah he says that in every interview it's his favorite does line. He? yeah and everyone's like this is tmi guys so i'm oh. like it's james everything he says is tmi yeah yeah having at least practicing having the baby is fun yeah exactly um well we'll watch the space see if I, i'll see if i can twist his arm and we'll, um, call, we'll call it baby Sean. Well, hopefully it's a boy then. <laughs> Actually, I like Sean for a girl. <laughs> to be honest, you're not the first person to say this. As yeah. in, um, my mum was desperate to have a girl and I came out. So oh, she was probably a little bit disappointed. <laughs> um, but she was going to call me Shauna and I'm so glad that she didn't because that would have been the, well. But I just like Sean for a girl. Yeah. I also like James for a girl. I like boys' names for girls. Yeah. Well, it's a bit weird. I was going to say, picking a name for a kid is quite tough. I already know what my kid's name is. Okay, well, don't say it on here because <laughs> people A, people will steal them. But B, or they'll pe- be but, mean about it. Or they'll be mean about it, which yeah. will put you off. Or they'll, th- something that we found was they always come back and say like, oh, I knew a guy that's guy at school that used to eat his bogeys. That, <laughs> you, that? Do you know? And you're like, brilliant. Now I can't get this. That kid at school, they'll scar you for life with names though. Yeah. I know one called, I knew one called Jimmy and I'm like, I ain't calling my kid Jimmy. Yeah, we used to know what Jimmy used to get up with. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Anyway, I don't want this podcast to be too long. The problem with having someone as cool and laid back as you on a show like this is that we could talk for hours. Oh, and um, <laughs> and I don't want to, I don't want to sort of have people, you know, having a, having to keep running and end up doing a marathon to listen <laughs> to this, uh, this podcast. But You've been an absolute angel to have on. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sean. Um, best of luck with second book sales yes. and best of luck with the first series of the podcast. If people aren't on Instagram and they wanna they wanna touch base with you and keep following you, any, any other platforms they can reach you on? Yep, it's at Maidly Chloe on Twitter as well. And uh, the Fat Loss Blitz, which is my second book, uh, is my page on Facebook too easy cam peasy so mm-hmm. just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has been listening to the dad podcast today for all of you guys watching on youtube thank you as well please give us a rating on itunes we want to see this show climb up the charts and reach more people but also please leave us reviews we want to hear your feedback good bad ugly we want to hear about it because we want to make this podcast better and also climb up the rankings yep um Chloe Haskell, you've been amazing. Producer Ollie, thanks for your time. And thank you to everybody who's listening. This is Sean Stafford hosting the Dad Podcast, and we will see you next time.